Um, I think it's just a natural question to ask, you know, what's going to happen next? Where does this all lead? Where are we going? What's going to become of us? And, and where do we stand in terms of the end of everything? Yeah, we, we think that the most likely way for the universe to end is something called the heat death, where the universe is currently expanding, it continues expanding and cooling and sort of winding down and over trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years, everything kind of stops happening. The stars burn out and matter decays and black holes evaporate. Everything kind of fades to black. Like a it's bunch just of dark. Yeah. It's just dark, you know. It's rubbish. Um, Is the heat death entropy? Is that like the second rule of thermo whatever? Yeah, the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, the second law of thermodynamics says that disorder only increases into the future. So entropy, disorder, everything evolves more and more to be just waste heat. It gets into some really interesting ideas about you know, what is the nature of time in that situation? Because the arrow of time, the direction into the future is sort of defined as where entropy increases. And if entropy can't increase anymore, what does that mean about time? Heat death, you're talking billions and billions of years, right? Is there yeah. anything slightly more urgent that we should care a bit more about? <laughs> The end of the universe is not something that we should consider as an imminent threat, but there are scenarios for the end of the universe that could occur sooner than the heat death. So the universe is currently expanding. It's actually speeding up in its expansion, which is something that's very weird, was only discovered in the late 90s. Whatever's making it speed up, we call that dark energy. We don't know what dark energy is, and we don't know what dark energy is going to do in the future. It could get more powerful. If it did that, then the universe could end somewhat sooner and, and in a more dramatic way, where it would actually rip galaxies apart, you know, sort of tear stars away from galaxies, and then planets away from stars, and then and then explode objects by, by just building up up this this expansion within objects that would lead to what's called a big rip where the universe is ultimately torn apart at some point uh, in the future and and it still would be a long way away we're pretty sure it could not happen within maybe 200 billion years okay so we've already covered the heat death and the big rip I really like the sound of the big crunch. The big crunch is what would happen if the expansion were to reverse. And at the moment, we think that's probably not possible, but because we don't know what dark energy is, we also don't know for sure it's not something that could change its nature and turn around and itself cause a recollapse. And so the immediate thing is galaxies would start to get closer to each other. Other galaxies would run into us. That's not that unusual occurrence in the cosmos. And in fact, we are gravitationally bound to our nearest neighbor large galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy. And we are fated to collide with the Andromeda galaxy no matter what happens with the expansion. So in about four billion years, we're going to slam into the galaxy next door and it's going to rearrange the stars and orbits. Our two galaxies are going to get all messed up and there will be a little bit more star formation and maybe the supermassive black holes in the centers of our galaxies will, will spiral in and collide. But it won't actually materially affect the solar system that much, probably, because individual stars tend not to collide during galaxy collisions. There's just a lot of empty space. So colliding with a galaxy next door is not the part that's scary about a big crunch. That can happen, that's fine. The scary part is that as space is contracting, not only is the matter getting closer together, but all of the radiation in space is getting concentrated into a smaller region. The light would be kind of compressed and get shifted toward ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray, uh, hard radiation. And that means that space would start to get hot. Um, it would start to be full of this hot plasma the way it was at the very beginning of the universe. Uh, it would start to uh, cook planets, ignite the surfaces of stars. You'd get thermonuclear explosions across the surfaces of stars just from the ambient heat of space. Um, and at that point, you know, everything is pretty much over. You've, you've destroyed everything in the universe. This one's kind of yeah. Sad. So, um, no, I, I agree. I, I think this is the worst possible ending. I, I, I and would by like, any of them above this. Uh, there's no escape, right? We can't. No, no, because no. it's space. You know, it's space. Like, it. where do you go? <laughs> yeah. What about some of the lesser known candidate ways? 
heat death, big rip, big crunch. Those are all like, what is dark energy going to do? How is it going to change the expansion? There are two more that are more connected to what is the fundamental physics that governs the universe. So one of them is a kind of blanket term for a few different possibilities that I call the bounce. This is a cycling universe, a universe that goes from big bang to end of universe to new big bang. And there are several ways this can happen. And then the neat thing about a cycling universe is the idea that something could kind of survive through the transition and you know maybe a little bit of information could persist after the end of the universe. And some people find that sort of comforting. My personal favorite end of the universe though is called vacuum decay. And that one, um, that one does not have any kind of silver lining. Um, it is a very complete ending. So the idea is that there's certain rules that govern how physics works in our universe, you know, the fundamental um, constants of nature. Those determine things like whether atoms can form, whether protons and electrons attract each other, if we have electromagnetic forces, all of that kind of stuff. And those in turn are set by the Higgs field. Now the Higgs field is this kind of energy field that pervades all of space. And you might have heard of it because it's connected with the Higgs boson, which is this particle that's it's sort of an excitation of that Higgs field. It tells us something about how particles got mass in the early universe. What happened with the Higgs field is it has some kind of value to it, right? Like a- Like 10, you know, 12, 12.5. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah, something like that. And we know that in the very early universe, less than a millisecond after whatever started the, the cosmos, it had a different value and all of physics was different. You know, we had different forces, we had different particles, particles didn't have mass yet. And then the Higgs field changed and when it changed, it set up the conditions for our universe today. And now we can have atoms and molecules and chemistry and life and everything's great. The problem is that based on our current understanding of, of the Higgs field, we think that the Higgs field could shift again due to a quantum tunneling transition, which is where you can have a particle on one side of a barrier and it could suddenly appear on the other side of the barrier without having to go around or, or through. It's a very low probability event, but it happens all the time at the subatomic scales. It's part of uh, how we you know, design electronics. We have microscopes that are built around the idea of quantum tunneling. It turns out it can happen to the Higgs field too. And so what would happen is that somewhere in space, anywhere in space, perhaps sort of right here, that the Higgs field would undergo this tunneling event and find this other value. And then when it does that, all the Higgs field around it would do the same thing. And so it would create a little bubble of a different kind of space where the laws of physics are different. It's called a true vacuum. And that bubble would expand out at about the speed of light. It's and like the universe eating through the, uh, our universe. When the physics inside yeah. and the physics on the yeah. outside collide, yeah. what happens? So there will be a bubble wall around it, yeah. the, around this bubble that's uh, high energy. So the bubble wall hits you first, that can incinerate you. Then once the bubble passes over you, then your atoms don't hold together anymore because you don't have the same physics inside the bubble. And then the other thing that happens is that the space inside the bubble is gravitationally unstable. So you also then collapse into a black hole. Um, <laughs> so the, you're, you are you are very thoroughly destroyed. Uh, are we sure about this? Are we sure like the bubble comes through this really nice and then on the other side i'm really <laughs> not, muscly and strong we are, we are not got, sure like, about anything no, this no? this is all this is very cutting edge we're not sure about any of this but this is yeah. where the equations currently i could be right? positive about the bubble of death i think maybe I on mean, the other you know, side of the bubble is really cool a nice well, fresh start yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, one, one final question from me is there anything to be hopeful for i mean it, it doesn't end well you know like i mean the universe <laughs> The universe is evolving and it's changing to be less hospitable to life and order and structure and all of that. The bright side is that we are at an amazing time in the universe right now where we can observe it, we can uh, learn about the beginning of the universe, we can speculate about the end of the universe, we can understand how our cosmos works. And, you know, we have 100 billion years even before we lose the ability to look at other galaxies, right? That's a really long time. So I think that uh, we can be grateful for the time that we have in the cosmos right now and understand that um, just because it's gonna end doesn't mean it's not worthwhile or good. You know, there can be good things that don't last forever.